You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. Um, <laughs> Jesus is rejected in Nazareth um, for, for reasons of entomology. I don't know. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 1. He being Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach this at the synagogue, and many who heard them were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? Power is not work done by his hand. This is not the carpenter, and of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon. And are, is not, are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And he said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went among the villages teaching. Thus, the Lord. Please be to God. All right. What do you make of this? Uh, I've, I've <clears throat> really been able to, to read it with a straight face because uh, they, they flat out call Jesus a bastard here. Um, they 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 do is this not the son of mary not the, um like they, they point out all of his family except they know who his dad is not so you're you're putting the worst construction on it i mean <laughs> when you sort of mix it with unbelief i think they're also putting the worst construction that he's well, doing so wait a minute okay let, let's dig into that so why would i mean so this is 30 years on right Right from when he would have grown up as a as a kid, and Joseph would have been around. Presumably, he's 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 dead by now. You don't hear about him afterwards. Yeah. Um, why are you Why are you thinking that they were thinking that that he he's a bastard that he's got no I, father? I I don't think that he has no father. I, I think that um sort of the the fourteen year old atheist claims on the internet are actually not usually without merit when they they sort of say an. In- you know, a whole religion was invented because somebody got pregnant out of marriage and wanted to to not get in trouble for it. Um, like I, I genuinely actually think that uh, most people didn't leave Mary, including her parents. Um, I, I know that sort of as she goes to visit Elizabeth, she departs with haste. Um, I, I, as somebody who's sort of gotten thrown out of a house once or twice, I know what it is to have to depart with haste uh, somewhere. I, I, I genuinely just, you, you're right. And you can disagree with me. You, you no, gen- I don't know if I'm disagreeing with you. I just, I just haven't, I haven't thought about, I, I, cause they go to Nazareth, right? Um, mm-hmm. But that's not where they were originally from. No, right? but it's where Jesus was raised. Correct. Um, correct. So, so all I'm saying is, is when they get to Nazareth, I'm talking about them, uh, you know, the the infancy narratives that Mark doesn't talk about. But when they get to Nazareth, they're they're man and wife, like they're mm-hmm. they're not. So it's not like Mary shows up early and then Joseph comes along after the baby. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I I, I got a hunch this was something that people talked about as he gained notoriety, and it's one of those things that nobody would pay attention to until you want to sit in a position of authority and teach. And it's one of those places where when the law convicts, and, and that's what it does, uh, the first thing we tend to go after is the person speaking it. Well, yeah, or their character, right? Right. And, yeah. and this is why don't shoot the messenger as a, as a phrase. Um, no, that's I, it. I, so go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's that's an interesting thought. And it very well could be. I mean, I, I certainly think that he's, that the crowd here is, um, trying to disparage Jesus and his character. Uh, Mm -hmm. The the Concordia commentary uh, uh, puts it in a different light of uh, this is actually Mark's way of being ambiguous with the uh, paternity of, of Jesus. Right. Mm. And so this is, this is kind of a a, a Markan way of, of, of doing that. I don't know, whatever. Um, 
but it's interesting to think about. I think both. I think both. Um, so, in regards to the uh, the uh, ambiguity, it's Mark's way of saying, uh, "Yeah, earthly speaking, it was Joseph, but we all know the real, the real story here." Type thing. I don't know. Yeah. I, I respect that too. Um, and, and it's one of those places where the, the scriptures are are quiet, and and so. Um, there's this thing that you don't want to do and this thing that that I, I think maybe we, we have a little bit of permission to do. Um, what you don't want to do is fill in the blanks with something that you're going to stand on and say, thus saith the Lord. Like, you, you don't want to sort of fill in the blanks of scripture and say, because we can put two and two together, my assumptions here are that God agrees with me. Uh, that That's a bad way to, to sort of read into the text. But at the same time, I, I think that we're actually given the, the permission here to see this inside of a narrative, um, to, to actually sort of talk about this and say, I don't know, I could be wrong. But it, it's very clear here that nobody here wants to listen to Jesus. And it, it's also very clear that that um, sort of the, the places where his, his uh, parentage is talked about, it, it's never sort of kindly. Um, and so maybe they didn't know, but maybe they did. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. I think I I think I kind of uh, uh, did that as as well last time when we were talking yeah. about the the woman uh, with the with the blood. Yeah, um, right. I I like the ability to sort of recognize that this is not sort of a doctrinal bullet point. These are real people. Uh, this is a historic account, and and uh, even just to that that we have sort of four gospels, it means that we're going to have different perspectives into these events. There's there's going to be details that are omitted. There's going to be details that that um, are sort of seen by some and not marked as important by others. But um, yeah. to me, like it, it just it, it 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 stands out, and I just have to wonder. No, I I like that. Um, and again, when I was uh, studying for this, <clears throat> um, the. It, one of the commentaries was kind of saying uh, one of the themes that's going on here um, or could be going on here is this, is this theme of, of, of honor. Right. Mm -hmm. And because that's, that's the way in which they're trying to uh, disparage Jesus here. Like you said, they're, they're saying, uh, where did this guy come from? Right. Where did, where did he get this, this sort of uh, uh, wisdom? Uh, uh, why does he have the authority to speak it? We know his mom, we know his brothers, like he's, he's not, He's nothing special, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to take down his honor, <clears throat> but the but the thought and the idea. And I'm curious. Maybe we can tease this out. Maybe we can't. Maybe your thoughts on this. When we're talking about honor in a sinful world, um, mm -hmm. it's always uh, 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 a limited commodity, it, 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 meaning that <clears throat> if somebody is higher honored, more highly honored, that necessarily knocks somebody else down. Yeah, there's a zero sum game to it, right? And I think you could you could see that uh, in in high school, you could see that it, it all over the place, right? Just the the ways in which you you interact with people, uh, the sinner can't have uh, hold two people in the same place of honor, right? <clears throat> in the same way that uh, uh, two valid Victorians, everybody just sits there and goes, okay, sure, two of them. <laughs> Right. Yeah, nobody likes a tie. <laughs> right. um, we have to have overtime. Um, right. I get that, which is why all the valedictorians should actually be forced to probably duel. Yeah, there should be. There should be. Oh, yeah, or just one test, right? It, no, it, like, like with a sword. Do you want to do a sword? Well, yeah. Okay. Do you want to listen to two speeches? Do Do you want to listen to two speeches? <laughs> um, yeah, I want to see two people who have really good grades. Battle it out with a sword. That's going to be an awesome sword fight. <laughs> Better than no sword fight. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Mo, no, but I actually, I think you're right. Um, and it's one of those places where the scriptures tend to flip everything on their heads because the people who are sent to preach, to, to speak God's word in an authoritative matter in both Old and New Testament are almost never the 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 people that the world would look at and say that is a person worthy of honor. Right. Um, like you, you can go to the little girl who, who pointed Naaman, uh, who actually was worthy of the, the world's honor to, to the prophet for healing. You, you can go to uh, the, the, epist uh, the, uh, uh, excuse me, the apostles um, and, and sort of their, their backgrounds. And uh, we, we sort of have even questioned whether or not like Peter is literate all the way through this thing um as jesus sort of approaches here it, it, it's something that that carries forward when you look in the church today and you get to say like who should be speaking the word of the lord 
And there is still a desire to say, like, we, we should definitely have people who are better looking than either of us. Um, we, we should definitely have people who have previous success and not uh, went to seminary because their their first career fell apart. We should definitely <laughs> uh, we, we should definitely have people who are only, only, only successful. Right. And then you get me or you. Right. Or talk to any of your pastors. They, they're all going to hopefully say the same sort of story, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I was talking to another pastor uh, uh, over the last week, um, and he was uh, expressing how uh, on Sunday he was just overcome with like this this weightiness uh, when you put that stole on before divine service, right? Mm -hmm. um, because every pastor should should have this uh, uh, understanding, like this is a this is a burden. Um, and, and I, I don't deserve to, to put this on and stand in the set of Christ to do these things. Yeah. If the people only, if the people only knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that, that's, um, the way that the prophet without honor in his hometown is usually picked up with it. And, and we, we tend to go to, so they grew up there and they, they did all sorts of foolishness. And I think this is maybe not the best way to look at it too. Uh, because like, you're right. I couldn't be a, a preacher in the place where I went to high school because they knew high school me and high school me was a, a sinner who did dumb stuff very publicly. Um, and that's fine. I don't think this is Jesus because he is without sin and stuff. So right. I, I don't think that like, it's a fair application, you know? No, certainly not because he he d uh, did dumb stuff running around town. But I think then it kind of goes to, and and maybe this plays into your first point. This goes to his no. We knew where he grew up. There's no way that this guy could have this authority. Like right. his parents weren't rich. Um, like we saw him running around town. His dad was a carpenter. Like he mm -hmm. doesn't have the pedigree to be doing this stuff. Right. I, I completely agree. Um, and, and that doesn't mean that the wisdom is is invalidated, that maybe where people know you're a fool, you shouldn't just sort of choose to be the best spot for you to, to be doing, doing this thing. Um, but at, at the same time, I, I, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one comparison. No, no. I think, you could, I think you can make some connections with the caveats of sinner and not sinner. But yeah. That seems helpful. <laughs> All right. There's a lung. There was a long man. All right. You want to keep going? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Verse seven. And he, being Jesus, called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed many with oil who were sick and healed them. Wait a minute. Hmm. I wanted to go back with the... Uh, 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 the, the last thing, which is weird, uh, in verse five, before we keep going, it says Jesus was not able, right. To do many miracles. What's that about? Except, except he was able to do a couple. Um, but what is I this? Like he that. was not able because the Greek actually has that, like was not able did not have right. the ability to do this. Like, what's that all about? I thought he was all right. powerful. I I, I want to sort of not question this according to, to God's power, but according to God's will, um, because God is not able to act outside of his will. God is not able to break his promises. God is not able to sin. Uh, it, it actually helps us sort through these things in the same way. You're not able to act outside of your will either. Um, like you're never going to make me like olives. And that's a really simple way. What? Um, but like, if you want to carry it for, yeah, they're gross. Uh, you want to do Both it even this way. And black? You just don't sin for a day. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. I don't disparage by by color when it comes to olives. That's that's not appropriate. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you do, but um, <laughs> oh, like yeah, okay. Uh. No, like wake up this day and choose not to sin. You, even you, a, a, a Christian uh, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, have a, a a will that is still set on the flesh. Um, God is not able to act outside of his will. And his will here is not to be a, a earthly king. His, his will is not to be a bread king. His will is not simply to, to be a, a vending machine for miracles. Um, if all the people here are looking for is a handout, but they will not hear the word of the Lord, they will not get it. He, he's not able to, because it, it would not serve them. 
it, it would it would sort of leave them looking for short term solutions and no faith, no hope, no salvation, no no anything to cling to, short of another need to be met by a vending machine. Yeah, <clears throat> and it also <clears throat> would almost appear as if uh, you, we get to see here that that Jesus it doesn't appear like he forces himself on on the people, right? Right? It, it it's yeah, it's it's Which, he's he's not going to be this this king of uh of the sword of any way like no mm -hmm. no you'll like it you. <laughs> yeah so so the people that he did heal then uh you get to assume with right uh, along with everybody else who's been healed that they're people who who went to god faith uh and, and god had mercy on them right yeah no, i agree good okay now he sends out the 12 they do some same stuff they do do the same stuff you said do do i was uh, to say that <laughs> So, so where do we go with this one? Uh, don't take stuff with you if you're a clergy. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> no, 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 right? Uh, this is not a universal um, uh, uh, description of the job uh, uh, that uh, uh, pastors or missionaries or whatever the case may be. I think a lot of people like to do that. I think, unfortunately, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, people assume that that's how pastors should be, right? They look at the apostles. They went out with nothing. You should live in a cardboard box. Um, right. Uh, and then you get the other side. And you got Joel Olstein who lives in a golden mansion, right? <clears throat> right. One argument does not help the other in either no. case. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, no, I think this is a very specific uh, apostolic charge and a very specific apostolic charge kind of just at the beginning because hmm. this is – he doesn't repeat this later on, right? That's true. It's not like at the Great Commission. It's not for Acts. Right. It's not for the Book of Acts where they're like, uh, don't take anything. No, it's, it's right here. They're actually here. sharing everything there. Yeah. <clears throat> right. It's right here, right now. You just go – bare minimum and mm -hmm. and again the, uh, there's people smarter than me who are, are coming up with these things but the when in studying for this uh there was a, a there was a thought that <clears throat> if this is kind of there's so many different levels and, and themes that are going on in the gospels as, uh, and here in mark as well and if this is uh jesus way of uh, first establishing right the apostolic uh, uh position here um and and maybe reestablishing israel um, it, not as spiritual Israel, right? We know that Jesus is Israel reduced to one and then, but spiritual Israel, the church establishing mm -hmm. that, um, they drew references of, uh, uh, of Exodus where, mm -hmm. uh, where, where Yahweh through Moses directs the people to go out when they're ready. Like when, when the Lord sends this 10th plague and, and you're free, this is how you're going to go. And it's sandals on your feet. It's uh, uh, only one garment. It's it, almost the exact same thing. Staff in your hand, ready to run. Like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of quite similar, There's which is an interesting thing. Vibes there, yeah, yeah, which is kind of interesting. That okay, this is maybe we've got some some uh, renewed Israel uh, connotations that are kind of going on here, which which is neat. Oh. Oh, maybe. And again, it's it's sort of a. Uh, a directed away. It's a, it's a church in retreat, just like the Exodus. Um, I, I think this is sort of maybe a pattern to recognize because we we love to sort of sing onward Christian soldiers and have the mission march sort of push into the world. We? Yes. Should we is maybe the question. <laughs> Should we? Um, because it, it, it gets sung enough. Um, no, but but Exodus was a place where the word was uh, was preached to Egypt and they would not hear it. And so the people actually retreated. And in that retreat were faithful. And in that faithfulness, the church grew. Um, in the same way here, uh, it, it actually is very clear. If the people are not going to hear you, don't just sort of reason them into it. Don't Don't force it. Don't even sort of do miracles until they're willing to sort of put up with you out of fear and awe. But if they will not, in the, the face of the pure word of God preached and the signs being done, believe, right? go somewhere else. Yeah, and we see that with miracles all the time. Jesus does that, right? Uh, in the book of John, uh, uh, shows it the best, uh, where after he does the feeding of the 5,000, the people want more miracles the next day and he refuses, right? Right. Um, so yeah, I think we, we do kind of see that it's, and, and then also that, uh, however you take it, I think it's parable. Uh, we speak about it that way, right. The rich man and Lazarus, um, yeah. where it's, 
you know, la- uh, the rich man asked uh, uh, for Lazarus to be sent back One from the miracle. dead, right? One yeah. more, just go be risen from the dead and tell my brothers so they don't end up here. And uh, now, even somebody if somebody would, believe yeah. would rise from the dead, yeah, right. and, and here we have it. But it, it's it's useful for today <clears throat> when we get to sort of talk about the mission of the church. And and I genuinely think that the the church here uh, was never called to growth, just faithfulness. God handles the growth when and where He chooses. He He does. But he simply says, go and go and do the things that you have been called to do. And if people won't hear, go somewhere else. Don't, it, this isn't yours to win. Right. This is yours to go and, and proclaim help. Right. And the shaking of the dust off uh, off their feet is, uh, I mean, for them, it was uh, a kind of a, a, a general a symbolic. Under, understood symbolic thing. It's not, it's not so much a curse as it is. It's, it's okay. You are, uh, you are rejecting uh, the message that I'm giving you. Christ himself. Um, mm-hmm. and therefore I will, I will, I can, I can't have anything to do with you. Right. Even the dust from your town, like I, I'm not of this. Right. It actually, it doesn't sort of show that the disciples are better than, but it, it shows the purpose by which they're sent. They, they are not sent to go and just be your friend. They are not sent to go and sort of make a life for themselves there. Go and preach. And if they won't hear the preaching, well, all you are is the preacher. Right. So, so what else is there? Yep. What else is there for you? Yeah. Go and go and preach somewhere else. That's that's what you're called to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do uh, the death of John the Baptist? We've been only going for how long? What? Has, what? 20, 20, <clears throat> 20 minutes. I think we can do it real quick. Yeah, but you clicked you clicked record before we actually started doing I know. Stuff. We like have to sort minutes. of get the shenanigans out of the way. Right. So we'll, that's we'll what I'm saying. So we got time. So we got like eight minutes, right? So uh, King Herod heard of it. Uh, for Jesus' name had become known. And some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. This is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because she had married her. Because he had married her, excuse me. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for the nobles and military commanders and leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it to you. And he vowed her, whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. So immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter to give it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. And when the disciples heard it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Mm. No, this is... uh, Mark's account of this, uh, and I can't remember. I don't think John has it, and I can't. I can't remember exactly how detailed Luke and and Matthew go into it. But <clears throat> I believe Mark is the only one who speaks about um, uh, the fact that uh, that Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. And when he heard him, he was greatly perplexed. And yet he heard him gladly. That's weird because we don't think of John the Baptist doing this, right? I mean, sorry, Herod doing of this. Herod doing this, yeah. I want to right. hear the word of the Lord. But you've got this proclamation of the word of the Lord. Um, and so he's arrested. We hear that all the way back in chapter one of Mark. So John's arrested right away in, in Mark's account. And I think, I mean, not, I think that's just how it does, but we get to hear it right away with Mark, right? The other gospel writers don't tell us until later on at his death. Um, but so for this time, however long this has been, maybe, I don't know, nine months, a year of Jesus kind of preaching and teaching and, 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 uh, coming about, uh, you've got this, this account where, where Herod is terrified because he knows that he did something evil. And, and the thing that I, the thing that I, I like, uh, again, about this account is you've got this man who is, uh, uh, steeped in sin, 
right? So he's uh, uh, committing adultery. He uh, had his his uh, uh, brother's wife divorce his brother, and then he married her, and that's not lawful according to Jewish law and all of these sorts of things, right? Um, so he's steeped in sin, and yet when the word of the Lord is, is proclaimed, uh, he still wants to hear it. it. It seems to be, and I don't want to give too much credit to Herod, um, it seems to be it, 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 at some level this is a man troubled with his sin, but only when the word of the Lord comes upon him. Right, it's not that tracks, man. <laughs> right, doesn't it? But again, we don't think of it. We think of Herod as this guy who just beheads John the Baptist because he lusted after his niece and all of this horrible stuff. And it's like, yeah, maybe that's all there. Uh, maybe, maybe he didn't so much lust after his niece, but the fact that his niece danced for all these people, and now he's stuck in this bind between like, oh, I yeah. promised to do something, and now I have to, and blah blah blah. And now dancing Herod- away worth half a kingdom, right? And um, right, exactly. And Herodias, she's playing games in the back, trying to get. I mean, all of this is just cloak and dagger sort of stuff. See, actually, I think this is this is because we almost always preach this text wrong. Um, every single time we, we come across this text, that the impetus is sort of Christian persecution today. Um, you guys, are you ready to, to be like John the Baptist and, and stand for morality, even if the world would, would cut your head off and parade it around? Because you look at, the, look at how awful everything is. Herod is a monster. You know what Herod is. That's the same word that was used for the guy that killed all the babies, even though it's a different one. Shh, we're not talking about it. And What's also... <laughs> Um, then, then, then also, uh, I don't know what kind of dance it would be to be worth half a kingdom, but I bet there was a poll involved. Let's go ahead and just read that right into the scriptures. You, you make it sound like this horrible thing and say, are you ready to be John the Baptist? When the truth of the matter is like, honestly, I have a lot more in common with Herodias than I do with John the Baptist only simply in watching, like whenever somebody does point out my sin, my first reaction is, is actually usually probably anger and wishing harm to them. Right. How can I silence that person? Right. This isn't be more like John the Baptist. This is like, here you are as Herodias wanting to silence the word of the Lord when the word of the Lord is actually the thing that's proclaiming forgiveness and resurrection. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's that's kind of the the interesting thing, because then you do have, it would appear as if uh, uh, two sinners here who are, are hearing the, the Lord's word in a different way. Now, I we can assume and that's probably the the best we could do. We could assume that 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 after this, I don't know that Herod had. I don't know what what Herod ended up doing. But in this situation, Mark wants us to know that he he liked listening to John, um, because John was proclaiming the word, even though that word was cutting at Herod and his sin. But repentance has two parts. It, it is first contrition and then hope. In, in every case, um, it is not just be sorry enough that God will sort of look over past what you're doing. It is always hear what you're doing is wrong and hope and mercy of God. Repentance and, and is contrition and hope all the time. It, it so can never do, just be hope without contrition. It can never just be contrition without hope. So what do you think then? So when he, that, that, that verse there, when he heard him, he was greatly perplexed mm-hmm. and he heard, and yet he heard him gladly. So are well, that you... was Mary who walked away from the tomb at the end of this gospel. Well, hold on. With what you just said there, are 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 you maybe inferring, and maybe we're reading too much into this again, but are maybe you inferring that, okay, you've got John, uh, you've got Herod there who's hearing from John how much of a sinner he is with the law, hmm. and yet he's greatly perplexed. And I'm going to lean into kind of what you're saying. Is he perplexed because... Because John is also talking about forgiveness of sins. I can't help but say that like repent or else repent. And then like there, there's always just sort of more to the message of the Lord than that's wrong. Right. We, we had that on the, the tablet already. Um, but, but there needs to be something to say about it. What is, why is God speak against this? Is it simply because he does not want you to feel good in your body? Or, or is it because there actually is a, 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 a thing called sin that breaks stuff? Does he want to see you hurt? Or does he want to see you called out of hurt? Does he want to see you die and go to hell? Or would he rather that you turn from your ways and live? Uh, it, it's, it's a clear proclamation from the beginning to the end of scriptures. And the preaching of this word, both law and gospel, is is perplexing. And, and it's easy to sort of paint with big pictures when it comes to a bad guy named like Herod or a Pharisee. But Mary walked away from the tomb perplexed. 
I, I think sort of the life of the believers is a messy one. Yeah. And it, it is not one that sort of says, well, now that I've repented, I'll never be a sinner again. Uh, and so you have John the Baptist who, who, after hearing the word also falls deeply into sin because he doesn't want to be embarrassed publicly about his reputation. And so like, man, I, I shouldn't have said half my kingdom. I should have said like up to, uh, up to maybe like a flogging for somebody I don't, I don't like that's as far as we'll go. Um, he falls back into gross sin. Does that mean he believes or doesn't believe? I don't know. Right. And you don't either. No, but I, I know don't. the word was preached to him and that's that's actually good for us too because like you know better have you have you fallen back into explicit sin right i yeah. have yeah yeah we all have. have mercy right and that's the perplexing thing right because the law is so damning and yeah. and and yet if he's also hearing this this gospel like that's just mind-boggling right and, and, and for somebody there who's who's just got the weight of everything upon him, I mean, again, what do you do, right? In in that situation, I know we're kind of uh, coming up against the time here, but but th- sin hardly ever happens in a vacuum. R- meaning, there's not anymore. Yeah, right. Mean there was mean, one that started uh, it, and it's all been right. And so, and that's what's so insidious about sin is because uh, it 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 affects us in so many different ways, and so many so many different connections are made with uh, this sin. And if I if I acknowledge this sin, or if I try and like think of think of what Herod's doing there, right? He already uh, wrote off his brother, ruined that thing, uh, caused his honor to go down, um, and made a harlot of Herodias. Uh, and, and, and what is he to do? Is he supposed to uh, divorce Herodias and make things right? Well, yes, but he's just like, this is so, this is so hard. It's, it, it's so messy. It's so icky. Like he, it's, it's a man. I think he's a man struggling with his sin here. And then to hear forgiveness and I don't know. Yeah. And then to cut off a guy's head, because again, like you said, he fell into egregious sin again and, and just found himself at a, allowed himself to get into this place where see this is where our confessors talk about mortal sin um mortal sin we don't talk about the same way like the roman catholics do although say like that one's just way worse than the others if you do that you know straight to hell do not pass purgatory you you, you're just out of luck um for, for us a mortal sin is the sin that finally divorces you from hope right it is the sin that finally divorces you from faith and you get to sort of see them piling on you actually get to see herodias's um, the, the thing that actually finally does it for her, she cannot hear that, that she is a sinner. Her reputation is born so much that she will not be made any lower. Uh, that, and, and so she will, she will insist that other people be humiliated so that she can finally stop. Um, and, and like, it's, it's a tragic story. And in the same way, like we get to sort of see as, um, the, the line of Herod continues that, that even as, as Jesus is eventually brought before, uh, Herod again for the crucifixion, like at a certain point in time, sin that, that's just sort of left to you to deal with by yourself, with your conscience, it will destroy your conscience and, and it will destroy your faith. This is why we're called to confess our sin and receive absolution. This is why we're, God doesn't want us to, to sort of stay with it, but to, to give it to Christ who bears it on the cross so that we can hear words of forgiveness. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so nice. All right. Is that enough? Are we out? I don't care. That's a spirit. We out.